Okay, so we just want to say thanks for being here um, this morning at Livewire Church. I love you guys, and I just, you know, I was thinking during that first worship song, but first of all, I just want to welcome everybody being here, everyone that's joining us online. We're really excited to see you guys all here this morning, and um, that first song that we were singing says that God is on the move, and sometimes we feel like maybe God's not doing anything in our life right now. Maybe our life feels a little bit still. Um, but God never sits still. And if it looks like your life is still right now, just know that God is at work in the kind of in the roots of your life and he's doing something. Just know that he is always on the move in your life and uh, he's up to something good and just be patient. Maybe you gotta be patient and just wait to see what he's up to, but I promise you it's gonna be awesome. So just, um, just know that he's on the move and he's doing something. So we do wanna welcome you out to Livewire. It's good to see you guys. It's good to just know that um, everyone's, you know, I've just been getting a chance just to talk with a few of you and just seeing how God's been blessing your lives and just like the roads he's leading you down and the open doors and um, it's just exciting stuff. And so we do wanna thank you guys for being at live wire um, just open up your hearts because uh, God's put a word in Josh's heart and he's just gonna speak out whatever you know he's just the vessel and he's just gonna speak out whatever God's put in his heart and it's up to us just to just to hear what God wants to speak to us and I know we all have different ish different things that we're going through if you're logging on online you guys have things you're dealing with in your life just like we all do here but God has a unique way of just meeting each of us where we are individually and personally in our lives so um, it's good, good stuff, good stuff. So why don't you guys welcome Josh, Josh up this morning. All right. So you could already see the, the title behind me there, Dead to Me. Again, want to welcome all of you that are here and all of you that are, that are joining us online. Um, that's not a, when you think about dead to me, obviously we probably more often than not, we think about uh, maybe somebody that uh, we might say is dead to us. And if you think about it, that's not a great statement to make. Like, I, I, that's, that's a pretty horrible thing to say to somebody. Like, you are dead to me. Like, they've done something so bad or so mean or whatever it is that, um, that it's just a horrible thing to, to kind of uh, uh, profess over somebody or to even say about somebody, hey, you know, you're dead to me. You know, this is, this is unforgivable, this mistake or this, uh, this wrong that you did. Um, it's, it's pretty horrible unless, unless we're talking about ourselves. And, uh, and that's what we want to look at this morning, and that's, uh, that's kind of where I want, to, uh, want us to, to go off of, and, and we'll, you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a, in just a moment. Um, we talked about last week how Christ's victory over sin gave us the opportunity to be done with sin. And I told you that this week we were going to talk about sin a little bit and, and just kind of what Christ, what Jesus did. And if you've ever read the book of Romans, or if you haven't, it's a great book, or actually letter, uh, it's a great book to, to read, to know who we are now because of what Jesus Christ accomplished through his life, through his death, his burial, his resurrection, what he accomplished for us. And Paul does an excellent job describing that, uh, you know, just kind of laying all of that out for us. So actually, we're going to allow the scripture, we're going to allow what Paul wrote to just kind of, um, uh, just kind of speak to us. Again, I, I encourage you, put on your listening ears and just allow God to speak to you. And then we'll just make a few statements here and there. Uh, but we'll start off in Romans chapter 5, verse 21, and we're going to go into chapter 6 uh, here as, we're, as we work through this. Notice what Paul writes. He says, so just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God or making us right with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, remember that Peter was saying, uh, we read last week that Peter said, hey, because of Jesus, because of his victory on that cross, because of what he did on that cross, we have been uh, forgiven of our sins. Sin is not an issue. Uh, he made us right with God. We have a new life. We have eternal life. All we have to do is acknowledge that. All we have to do is acknowledge that free gift. Notice again that Paul says that just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death. That's past, present, future. That sin ruled over every person on the face of this earth because Adam and Eve represented mankind. And when they allowed sin, when they disobeyed God and allowed sin to enter into the world, sin was passed down to every single person that was born after Adam and Eve. But the awesome thing, again, is this, is now God's incredible and wonderful grace rules instead. 
Now, just as sin entered the world because of what Christ accomplished, God's wonderful grace now rules instead. Okay, he goes on. Well then, all right, Paul's writing. He says, well then, should we keep on sinning? You know, sin, he's saying, hey, sin no longer rules. And now we have this wonderful grace. So should we keep on sinning? Should we keep on doing wrong? Should we keep on making mistakes? Should we keep on disobeying God so that, uh, so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? To which, to which people that want to keep doing what they want to do will say, yes, right? You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I should keep on sinning. Yeah, I should keep on making mistakes. Yeah, I want to live the life that I want to live. You know, I want to be an alcoholic or I want to be a drug addict or I want to look at pornography or, you know, people that want to do wrong, people that want to do the things that are bad for them, that are, that are not benefiting their life. And we'll see this in just a few moments. People that want to do that, they're going to answer this question that should I abuse God's grace and keep sinning? Yeah, yeah, I should. Notice what Paul says. Again, he says, well, then should we keep on sinning? so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace. Of course not. He says, of course we shouldn't. Jesus Christ dealt with sin. He got rid of it so it doesn't have to be an issue in your life and in my life. Jesus Christ did that. So should we abuse the wonderful grace, this wonderful gift? Uh, again, think about grace for a moment. Grace is not something that you and I can earn. It's undeserved favor. That's what grace means. It's undeserved. You and I don't deserve it. We can't earn it. There's nothing that we could do to pay for it. Okay? And even if we tried, it would, it, we, we could not, we could not uh, pay enough for grace simply because, again, we would still, we would still fall short of God's glory. As, as Paul even writes in Romans 3.23, he says, we all fall short of God's glory. Um, each and every day. And so notice again, Paul says, of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? If you're taking notes, jot this down. Jesus is responsible for right standing with God and eternal life. You're not responsible for that. I'm not responsible for that. I didn't make that happen. You didn't make that happen. There's no person on the face of this earth. No organization can make that happen. No church can make that happen. No Christian anywhere can make that happen. No individual can make that happen. Jesus is the one that was responsible for right standing, making us right with God and eternal life. That's a gift, friends. So let me ask you this. Somebody that loves you, somebody that cares about you so much, somebody that wants the best for you, somebody that gives you good things, would you hurt them? See, this is essentially what Paul's asking. He's saying, should we continue to sin? Should we continue to hurt God? Should we continue to abuse his grace? Should we continue to do that even though God's given us this wonderful gift? Should we continue to sin even though God's given, given us this wonderful gift? And the answer to that is, I mean, think about it. God loves us. He cares about us. He wants the best for us. He gives us good things over and over. I mean, think about, again, your life, your individual life, your personal life. You don't bring, you can't, you know, you can't bless your life the way God blesses your life. You can't give yourself good things the way God gives you good things. God has good things for you. He has greatness for you, right? And so we have that simply because of his grace, because of his mercy, because of his, his goodness in our lives, not because of something that we deserve. Should we abuse that? Should we abuse his love? Should we abuse how much he cares about us? Should we abuse how much he, uh, how much he desires the best for us and, and the good that he brings into our lives? Should we abuse that? Because basically that's what Paul's asking when he says, hey, should we keep on sinning so grace would abound? And that's why Paul just says emphatically, of course not. Of course we can't. He goes on, verse 6, Romans 6, verse 6. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so, so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Again, if you're taking notes, sin lost its power in your life the day Jesus gave his life for humanity. That's when sin lost its power in your life. You and I, I mean, you go back over 2,000, 2000 years ago. That's when Christ lived. That's when he died on that cross and came back to life. You and I obviously weren't around at that time. But when Jesus Christ said it was finished, 
When he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished, sin was dealt with. It was paid for at that very moment. And, and, and sin's power over our life was destroyed that very moment, even though we weren't even born yet. And even people after us that would be, that would be born, you know, that sin, the power of sin in their life has been broken because of what Christ accomplished on the cross. Notice that Paul said, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ. Now, obviously, he's not talking about literally, you know, because I wasn't there on the cross. I don't know if you were. I don't think you were. None of us were there on that cross dying with Jesus. But what Paul's saying is spiritually, our sinful selves were crucified. When he was on that cross, every single person was on that cross. Every, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, past, present, future was on that cross. Jesus represented, <clears throat> Jesus represented mankind. And what he did, he did for mankind. He died with and for our sin. He did it for mankind. He did it for each one of us. Christ died with and again for our sin and humanity. We died to sin. Verse 8. He said, and since we died with Christ, we know we also uh, will live with him. We, we know, excuse me, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. So there again, we have this hope. We have this hope that we will live even when we die simply because Jesus Christ walked out of that grave. So he says uh, again, but Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. Remember, we, uh, remember what uh, uh, Peter said, uh, what Peter wrote last week, where he said that Jesus took, uh, took away the keys, or actually John wrote in Revelation that Jesus took away the keys, the power, the authority of death and the grave. All right, Death no longer has any power over him. He took that, he stripped it. He took that power away from Satan. Verse 10, when he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. In other words, Jesus doesn't live for himself. He lives for the glory of God. Now notice, because this is, this is important. He says, but now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul's saying, notice, notice Jesus. Jesus didn't live for himself. He didn't live for himself. He says, now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. Or when he came back to life, he lives for the glory of God. And so Paul says, just as Jesus did that, just as Jesus is giving his life to God, so also let's do the same thing. He says, so you also consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin. Why? The power of sin has been broken in your life. Friends, here's the thing. We don't have to sin. We don't. We don't have to sin. Now, we will sin, but we don't have to sin. What do I mean by that? We will make mistakes, but we don't have to plan to make those mistakes. We don't have to plan to hurt people. We don't have to plan to cuss at people, you know, make people feel stupid and be rude to, to people and hurt people with our words or hurt people even physically. We don't have to plan to sin. We don't have to plan to do bad things or to, to do the wrong things, do things that don't benefit our life, do things that ultimately will bring death to our life. And again, we'll see this, in, uh, see this more in just a few moments. We don't have to plan to do that. Now, will we make mistakes? Yes. Every single one of us. Again, Paul said, we all fall short of the glory of God. In other words, that glory of God that he's speaking of is the perfection of God. It's all of God's perfection. We all fall short of God's perfection every single day. But the fact of the matter is, we don't have to plan to. That's the difference. See, there are a lot of people, and dare I say, there are a lot of Christians that are just like, oh yeah, you know what, I'm a Christian, but they plan to sin. They plan, they plot, oh, you know what, I'm gonna get this person back. Oh, you know what, well, you know, I, I'll do this behind closed doors. I'll do this bad thing, I'll do this wrong thing. I'll do this thing that I know doesn't honor God, but nobody else will see me. Well, guess what? God sees, God sees us. So see, we don't have to sin. We don't have to sin, but we will. We'll make mistakes. And again, we'll make mistakes, but we don't have to plan to do wrong. And this is what Paul's talking about here. 
Notice he also says in verse 11, he says, so you also should consider. This word consider is actually an, an accounting term. It means to take inventory. It means to calculate. It means to compute. And so, you know, you would, you'd go to accountant and if you were a business or if you're an individual and you say, hey, listen, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my budget together and I'm trying to see, you know, what my expenses are and, and what my income is and what I have, what I have left, what I have in between that I can, that I can save, right? You go to accountant and they're going to help you. And what are they going to do? They're going to crunch the numbers, right? They're going to start adding it all up. They're going to start dividing. They're going to start seeing. They're going to lay everything out. All right, here's all your income. Here's all your expenses. All right, here's what's coming in. Here's what's going out. And here's what's what's left. That's what this word means. So just like we would just sit there and say, all right, well, yeah, 7 plus 7, that's 14, right? I mean, 12 divided by 6, that's 2, right? I mean, just like we would 7 minus 4, that's 3, right? Just like we would do adding, subtracting, multiplying, or division, that's what this word, that's what this word means, or this is, this is an accounting term. In other words, Christ died plus Christ rose equals you dead to sin and alive to God. See, calculate it. Add it up. Crunch the numbers. If you calculate all the evidence, if you calculate all the ev evidence, you will conclude that you have been made right with God. Go ahead, add it up. Do it for yourself. Add it up, subtract it, divide it. Add up all the facts and you will see that it equals eternal life. If you add up all the facts, you will see very clearly, oh, God has eternal life for me. Again, if you're taking, no if you're taking notes, crunch the numbers and you will see for yourself there is new life in Christ. There is new life for you and I in Christ. When you crunch the numbers, when you add it all up, when you calculate it, there is nothing bad at all when we give our lives to God. Nothing. There is nothing evil. There is nothing perverse. There is nothing wicked when we give our life to God. But when we give our life to sin or when we go back to sin, sin equals death. Again, we'll see this in just a moment. Verse 12. He says, don't let sin control the way you live and do not give in to your sinful desires. So notice that it starts out with desires. James wrote about this. He says it starts out with desire. And if we don't do something with that desire, what happens? That desire begins to grow in us. It begins to become impregnated and gives birth to sin, James wrote. He said, Paul continues on verse 13, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. So it's like, you know, some people will be like, oh, well, you know what? I'm not, I mean, it's not like I'm doing this, you know, with every fiber of my, of my being. You know, I'm, my, my right arm is, is the only part of my body that's sinning. Well, Jesus said this. If your right arm causes you to sin, chop that sucker off. If your left, arc, left eye, left, I was going to say ear, and I got ear and eye put together, R. Uh, if your left ear causes you to sin, chop it off. What was Jesus saying? He wasn't speaking literally. He wasn't saying literally, hey, chop it off. He was simply saying, hey, no matter what, no matter what you use to sin, if I use my right arm, guess what? It affects my whole body. If I use my mind to sin, it affects my whole body. I use my words to sin, it affects my whole body. If I use my right foot, my right leg to sin, it affects my whole body. It's like a virus. And it's like, you know, maybe some movies that, that, that we've watched where, you know, the guy gets infected or the girl gets infected in the hand and it starts to spread, you know, the, whatever that color of that virus just starts to spread throughout the body. And it's the same with sin. No matter where it starts, no matter what instrument we use in our body, it begins to spread throughout our body. He goes on, he says, instead, give yourselves completely. So don't give, don't give a part of your body to sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God for you were dead, but now you have new life. We have new life. We have this new life in God. We have this new life in Christ. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. 
He says, do what is right for the glory of God. Do what is right to bring honor to God. Why? Because, because of this great, wonderful, incredible gift that he's given us that we can't deserve. We didn't deserve to be forgiven of our sin. We didn't deserve to have a brand new life. And we sure didn't deserve to have eternal life, to spend eternity with God instead of eternity separated from God in hell where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, where everything despicable and everything horrible and ugly and nasty will live forever. We don't deserve eternal life. We deserve eternal, left, eternal death. We, we deserve eternal damnation. But God, through Jesus Christ, took care of all that. So in light of that, in light of that, why would we not give our lives completely to God? Why would we plan to sin? Why would we not give our lives completely to God? Why would, we, why would we want to hurt God? Why would we want to say, well, you know what, you know, God, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of this. I know, I know, God, you gave me this wonderful gift and everything, but, you know, and I know this is going to hurt you. Why? Why would we want to do that? And again, Paul says, uh, so use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. And he was saying this earlier uh, as far as being slaves to sin. And he's using this analogy of slavery. And we know, even though none of us here have ever experienced slavery, we've read it in the history books, and there's still slavery that's going on around our world today. And it's despicable, is it not? I mean, come on. Slavery... Wherever it started, which actually, you know, you look at it, I mean, it was already in the Bible. It was already back in, back in ancient times, slavery was going on even then. You know, we think of slavery in, in, in other ways, but uh, slavery was already going on back then. And, and it's despicable, you know, the way people are uh, chained up like they're, like they're animals and, and the way people are beaten if they're not, if they don't do what the master wants them to do and, and they only get uh, certain meals, only so many meals a day and a certain amount of food in, with each of those meals. And, and, you know, it's not like they're free to just go here and there. No, they're chained and they're locked up. And again, it's, it's despicable. It's horrible. You go into your history books and you read about just the things that people were, uh, uh, they went through because they were in slavery. It's despicable. And, and this is exactly what Paul is getting at when he talks about sin. Sin is no longer your master. He says, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. There's freedom in Christ. Not a freedom to sin, a freedom to to bring glory to God, a freedom to say, hey God, thank you for this incredible gift that you've given me. Now I'm gonna live within the boundaries, the parameters of this freedom that you've, that you've freely given me because I know outside of those parameters is death. Only death awaits me out there. God, thank you that I could, that I could roam freely in your freedom. In your goodness, in your grace, in your mercy, I can roam freely in, in all this, in this new life that you've given me. God, I thank you that I can, I can roam freely through all of this. God, I thank you for this incredible gift. I thank you, God, for this freedom. He says, verse 15, verse 15, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Notice that he's asking, he's asking the question again. All right. He says, well then. Since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? And again, he says, of course not. You know, we've got this wonderful grace. We got this wonderful gift. And he says, well, you know, since we're not under law anymore, since we're not having to, you know, we have a bunch of rules. And again, we think of the Ten Commandments when there was over 600 actual commandments. And we think, oh, you know, uh, you know that's 600, over 600 commandments. Since we don't have to obey all these, you know, 600 commandments, you know, should we continue to, to sin? Paul says again, of course not. You know, since we've been free from the law, should we continue? To, no, of course not. He said, let's live in the freedom of this new life that God's given us. And let's enjoy this new life in Christ knowing that this is the absolute best that God has for us, that everything outside of those parameters, everything outside of those boundaries, everything that has to do with sin only leads to death. And we're coming, coming to that point in just a second. Verse 16, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? Now, think about that. Because people that have been, been put into slavery... 
people that have been put into slavery, do you think that they chose to be put into slavery? Like people that say, oh yeah, so let me get this right. You're going to mistreat me. You're only going to give me a certain amount of meals a day and a little bit of food with those meals. You're only going to give me a little bit to drink. Where I'm going to sleep, it's going to be, it's going to be despicable. It's going to smell so bad. There's going to be my fellow men, fellow human beings, feces all over the place. So that's going to be my life if I become your slave? Sure, I'll do that. Right? None of us would do that. None of us would sign up for that. But again, notice what Paul says. He says, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? We are actually choosing. If we're going to choose sin, we are actually choosing to live in deplorable conditions. I mean, think about that because that's actually what we're saying. Paul says, hey, you know, whatever you choose, you know, whatever you choose to become a slave to, to, to obey, that's, you know, those are the conditions. And if we choose to live in sin, we're going to live in deplorable conditions. We're going to live in just, you know, just death and, and disgusting and, and just everything that, uh, everything that is, um, you know, just horrible and nasty. So he goes on. He says, you could be a slave to sin, which leads to death. There it is. He says, you could be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living or leads to being, again, in right standing with God, made right with God, leads to eternal life. So we have a choice. See, we can make the choice to be a slave to sin and have a deplorable life, have a life that's just disgusting, nasty. We may not see it at first, but slowly and surely it's bringing death. Or we could have this new life, this life of blessing. This life of where God is actually looking at us and he's doing, uh, bringing things into our life that, that, is, that is the best for us. That is nothing but the best for us. I mean, which one? Because it kind of goes back to where God looked at the people of Israel, the children of Israel. He says, I'm going to put before you two options. You got life on one side and you got death on the other side. Here's another two options. God says, I'm, I'm going to put before you blessing on one side and cursing on the other side. He says, you got life and blessing on one side and you've got cursing and death on the other side. And then he tells them, choose life. Choose life. Because there's no life in, in cursing and death. There's no life there. Choose blessing, choose life. That's what God has for every single one of us. That's what God has for not just Christians. God has that for all of humanity. Again, remember, Jesus hung on that cross. It is finished. He did it for all of humanity, not just people that loved God. He did it for all of humanity. So he goes on, he says, so you can be a slave, you can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, once we were all slaves of sin, but now we wholeheartedly obey this teaching uh, we have given you, or that Paul is talking about, that we have given you. Verse 18, now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. So he's pointing out, hey, here's the reason why I'm talking about slavery. I'm just using it as an illustration. Um, Let's see, verse, verse 19, second half of verse 19. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led even deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. Verse 20, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the result? So, you know, when you, were, when you were slaves to sin, when you were just living for sin, he says, hey, you, you, you didn't have any obligation to do what was right. So what was the result of that life? What was the result of you and me living for sin? Every, every single one of us remember that. We know our past better than anybody else. And when we look back at our past and we say, yeah, you know, when I was living away from God, when I was living in sin, yeah, I know what the result was. And so Paul describes that a little bit. And maybe, you know, we could probably, probably relate to some of these things. He says, you are now ashamed of the things you used to do. Things that end in eternal doom. Things that end in you being separated from God for eternity. Verse 22. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. 
Now you do these things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages, here it is, the end result of all of this, the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ or through Christ Jesus, our Lord. The wages. That just simply means the paycheck. The paycheck of sin is death. If you were to work for somebody and they tell you, all right, you know what? I, you're hired. You know, I, you passed the interview. Everything went good. You answered all my questions right. And I want you to come work for me. And I'm going to pay you each week. I'm going to pay you death. Every week, you're going to, the wages for the hard work you're going to, you're going to put in for my company, for my business is death. I mean, none of us would sign up for that, but this is what Paul's saying. The wages, the paycheck from sin every week we say, all right, sin, where's my paycheck? Here you go. It's death. I've got death for you. I've got death that is happening in your marriage relationship. I got death that's happening in your friendships. I got death that is happening in your relationship with your children. I got death that is happening, the, the, the payment, the wages, the, the paycheck. Your paycheck is, the, is, is death and it's happening in your career. It's happening in your body physically. It's happening in your body emotionally. It's happening, and more importantly, spiritually. Because that's all sin does. Sin just brings death. So Paul, just very emphatically bringing the point home, he says, hey, if you want to be a slave to sin, the wages, the paycheck of sin is death. He said, but if you give yourselves to God, if you give yourself completely to God, then the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now think about that. Because why would I work for sin to receive a paycheck of death every week when I can receive the free gift of eternal life. When I can receive the free gift of God's grace and mercy and loving kindness, his best for my life. Why would I work, work, actually put forth effort and labor and toil and blood and sweat and tears to receive a paycheck of death? Why would I work for that? I mean, if, if we're thinking logically, we wouldn't, right? But yet so many people are doing that every single day. They're working for sin and not realizing or realizing that the paycheck that they're getting for it is death. Instead of just saying, instead of looking to God and God saying, hey, you don't have to work for me. I've got a free gift for you. All you have to do is acknowledge this gift that is free. All you have to do is acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life. And my gift is yours. All you got to do is it's a gift. It's wrapped up. Wrapped up in wrapping paper. It's got a bow on it. But think about it. Just like when we wake up Christmas morning or it's our birthday or anniversary, whatever it might be, somebody, that special someone that gives us that present, we can't enjoy that present until we what? So we open it up. And that's what it means to receive this free gift. The gift is yours. It's mine. But we've got to open that gift up. So, again, if you're taking notes, you can work for sin and get paid death or receive eternal life for free. It's our choice. Sin once ruled over our lives, but Jesus died and rose so we can experience true life. That's what Jesus did. So we can experience true life on this earth. We can experience real life on this earth. We can experience a life that is a life without sin, without death. We can live a life that is pleasing to God. We can live a life of blessing. We can live a life, uh, a, a new life, and we can have eternal life. That's what Jesus Christ paid for. And so that's why I say, you know what? It would be a horrible statement for me to make to my children or to my wife or to family members or to good friends to say, you're dead to me. I mean, that's just horrible to say to somebody, no matter what they did, unless, unless I say that to myself, because friends, it's our choice, but sin in all reality is dead to us. This flesh, our sinful selves is dead to us. Jesus paid for it on the cross. He died for it on the cross. And so sin is dead to us, but it's our choice 
whether we want it to be dead to us. It's our choice whether we want to give our lives to sin or we're going to give our lives completely to God. Let's go ahead and close up in a word of prayer. God, I just thank you so much for your word. I thank you, God, for what you've shared with us today, Lord, and just even just, even just allowing your word, just allowing the scripture just to speak to us about what Christ did for us on that cross, what it means to have our sins forgiven. Like that, that, that wasn't just something small, but that was something huge that you, Jesus, did for all of humanity. Not one person was left out. Not one man, not one woman, not one boy, not one girl was left out, God. We all can experience new life in you. We all can experience a life without sin, a life without death. We all can experience a new life, an eternal life, when this life on earth is done. And God, I pray that not only would that be our prayer each and every day, but God, that we would, we would strive for that. Lord, that we would just be done, as we said last week, we would be done with sin, that we would choose life in you. We would choose, choose life and choose blessing each and every day, God. And if there's any person at the sound of my voice, Lord, uh, here at our house location or those watching online, that they've never, never given their life to Jesus Christ, Lord, it, it's, it's just as simple as acknowledging, acknowledging that you, Jesus, paid for our sin, that you died on that cross for our sin, that you came back to life. And Lord, I, I just pray for any person that has never prayed that prayer, that right now they would just pray that prayer. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Wash my sin away. Give me a new life. Give me eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you so love me. Even with all my mistakes, all my wrongs, that you so love me. That you gave your life for me. That you paid for my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I want to thank all of you, all of you for being here. Those of you that are here at our house location, those of you that are, that are online, definitely want to encourage you. If you prayed that prayer or if you just say, hey, Josh, you know what? I want to take my next step. I don't even know what my next step is with God, with Jesus Christ. I want to take that next step. Go to our website, livewirechurch.com. Click on All Access Sundays and fill out that Connect card. If you're a first-time guest, fill out that Connect card. We would love to connect with you. And then also, if you have questions about the church or you say, hey, I'm ready to take my next step, fill out that Connect card. If you're in the Naples area, we definitely want to invite you to, to come on out uh, to, to our house location because it gets fun after this. We get to just kind of encourage each other and, and just kind of uh, uh, share what is it that we heard as we, uh, as we got to hear the message and, and, and all of that. And so definitely want to invite you to do that. Again, you can go to our website for all the information on that. So we're going to go into our discussion here at our house location. Those of you online, thank you so much for being with us. Hope you were encouraged. Hope you were challenged. Hope you heard something life-giving today. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. We'll see you next Sunday. Amen.